Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. So quite a quick one. Uh, I just basically wanted to go over how to use the mouse scroll wheel uh, with the new Unity Input System. Um, there isn't much written about it and I figured I forgot to include it in my main video and I really should have. Uh, so I'm going to go through and go over it now. So I've already created and imported the input package and I've already created my input. Um, there's a link in the description if you don't know how to do that to my initial video. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to open up my controller and create a new action map. We're going to just call this player and now new action. So this is the action we're going to be using for the scroll. So under action type, I'm going to change that to pass through and control type, I'm going to change that to an axis. So we're going to be reading the mouse scroll as an axis. Um, so we're going to be changing uh, the binding. I'm going to change that to if you just type in scroll um, and I'm going to take the scroll Y and I'm just going to click save asset. So we're basically going to be, um, oh, I'm going to change that name from new action as well. We'll change that to uh, mouse scroll Y, save asset. Okay, so what we're basically going to be doing is listening out for this mouse scroll Y event, um, which will be triggered as soon as we scroll with the Y. Uh, we're basically just going to be passing back a float, which will behave as our axis, um, which basically just give us the direction of which the scroll wheel has gone. Um, and if it's zero, uh, the user isn't scrolling. Um, don't ask me why, but it defaults at 120. So if I scroll up, it goes to 120. If I scroll down, it goes to minus 120. And obviously it sits on zero if um, I'm not scrolling. Um, but we, we can use that. We'll basically just put listeners out for if it's greater than zero or less than zero. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and continue. So I'm just going to click on my input and make sure that I click the generate class and click apply, which will then give us a class that we can use in our script. So now if I open up our script, um, so it's an empty script, but what we initially need to do is create a reference to our default control. So we can do that simply by typing a variable name, um, name type. So we'll go default control and it'll pop up and then we give it a name. So we'll just use the camel case default control. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to create an instance of this under the awake. So we'll create a private void and just use the awake, the built-in awake. And we'll basically just set it to a new instance of itself. So nice and simple. Um, the next step would then also be to enable and disable. So if you're using it in a pause menu, uh, obviously enable it when the menu is um, launched. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to enable it uh, when the script has enabled it and disable it when the script is disabled. So I'm going to make use of our void on enable. And our on disable as well. And then inside there, we're obviously just going to enable and disable the control where needed. All right, I like to hide these in a region just because um, I don't like to see them. <laughs> um, just makes it look a little bit cleaner. Enable and disable. And what that basically does is we can then close it away and pretend it doesn't exist. All right, so what we then need to do is obviously um, make use of the function that's called. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a float to basically house our axis value. Um, so I'm just going to make it public so that we can view it. So I'm going to create a public float for, uh, let's call this mouse scroll y. Um, and we're basically just going to use this variable to house um, our axis value. So to do this, we can basically just tell our default control um, and then we use, uh, we called our menu player. So basically the structure of this is, oh, I've just opened up Unity, it's gonna try sync. All right, <laughs> we'll just wait for that. All right, so if I open this back up, you can see it's our action map followed by our action. So action map, which we call player, followed by our action, now scroll Y. And then basically this has a function called perform function, sorry, event called performed that we can basically 
uh, make use of. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use this performed and we're going to read its values. Um, so when this is performed, uh, we're going to perform whatever we put after this plus equals, in which case um, we need to give it an alias um, just so we can use the values of the event. So we give the event an, an alias of x um, and then we use this equals and um, greater than sign basically just to what we'll do is we'll grab the axis. So we're going to use it to set the value of our axis. So we're going to basically tell it to uh, set our mouse scroll y equals and our event data dot, um, I believe it's read value. Yep. And then the type. So we're expecting a float. And then just close that off. Okay. So I know it's a little bit harder to explain as events do um, can get quite complicated, but basically we're making use of this performed event. This performed event has uh, the best, the easiest way to say it, it has its own built-in variable. <laughs> um, that's probably a really bad way of explaining it. But we're making use of this variable and uh, basically just its event data. Um, all right, so to continue on, we're basically going to make use of this value here. Um, so I'm going to basically just use it in an if statement. So we'll create a private void um, and we'll just use our update here. And inside our update, we're just going to use this variable here in an if statement. We'll basically say if mouse scroll y is greater than zero, we'll do a debug dot log, and we'll just say scrolled up, and we'll basically just do the opposite for scrolled down. So when it's less than zero, we scrolled down. All right, so let's go to Unity and. Take a look how that looks now. All right, so let's make sure that my script is attached, which it is. Um, and let's hit play and check that our debug logs come through. All right, scroll down and scroll up. Cool, they do come through. It looks like the value change is too quick for us to even see what it looks like. <laughs> um, although you can catch it sometimes. Um, all right, so Let's go ahead and just tidy up our script a little bit. So I'm going to bring through just for the sake of consistency. Uh, I'll specify all of these private. I think if you don't specify just defaults to private. Um, but yeah, no. So there you are. Nice, quick, easy way to use the mouse scroll. Um, and then basically instead of these debug.logs, you can um, call a function if you need to. Or just do what you need to do inside here. So thank you for watching, and if you haven't seen my new Fallout series where I'm basically recreating Fallout from the ground, uh, go ahead, check a link in the description, there will be a link to the video. Um, yeah, so come and have a look, see what I've done so far, I'm actually really enjoying the project, um, and hopefully you will too. So go ahead, check it out, and I'll see you in the next episode.